Well, good evening, good evening, good evening. This is the Minister M.L. Kimball coming to you guys live, and I decided to do a different format uh, with this uh, quick little briefing tonight. I wanted to make sure that I got a better picture, and it seems like that we, when I do record these videos whenever I'm live, uh, I get a better picture when I do it on our Zoom platform. Uh, but there's a few things I do want to talk to you guys about tonight, and I do want to be very, very, very transparent with our situation concerning State Farm Fire uh, and Casualty Company, as well as their attorney, Lori Thompson's office, which we did, our, our representatives did send out a notification by email today with a document uh, spelling out where we stand as a corporation and uh, with these violations that have been committed against our corporation, uh, unheard, disregarded, and ignored for the last two years. Um, we have concrete evidence to support our claims regarding what State Farm did do and allowed to happen to our company as far as our privacy uh, laws that were violated, violating our privacy rights, my personal privacy rights, publishing defaming derogatory statements about me personally, and then without any founding evidence of any sort publishing that I personally had something to do with the criminal disgusting activity that occurred against our business uh, that destroyed our business that was located in a predominantly white uh, city. Uh, it's very important to point these things out because I want you to understand that we experienced uh, racial discrimination then this goes back as far as when I worked at the fine, as the finance manager at the McNeil Chevrolet located six miles from our former business. I want you to understand, I want, I'm not going to sit here and come up with anything that's false allegations. There is evidence out there, uh, but I am required to, according to what I was told, because the Ohio Civil Rights Commission is involved, I have to be very careful on what I release to the public regarding uh, that situation. But I want you to understand that the uncomfortable jokes, comments, innuendo, whatever you want to call it, it goes back to when I was employed for seven years at McNeil Chevrolet. I was not just a salesman. I was the guy that sat in the finance office and arranged the car loans for both new and used vehicles for the dealership. And for the seven years, they predominantly only had me. In fact, they didn't really like when I took off time um, because I did make over $100,000 a year when I sat in that chair, but I did get sick of the garbage. I just got tired of the jokes. I was called a Rambi. I was called the token. I was called the, the black guy, the, the black guy. I mean, just the jokes were ridiculous over the seven years, and it was never an issue with this dealership. But I want you to understand that State Farm has an obligation, according to the laws that are surrounding the laws that govern insurance procedures and policies in the state of Ohio, to conduct a full and thorough impartial investigation on every person surrounding this business when they decide they want to call an investigation. Now, I want you to understand something. Seven, literally, I want you guys to hear me and hear me good. Seven days after this hate crime that was posed against our business in Swanton uh, happening, State Farm decided to conduct an investigation into our entire corporation, but they only contacted me and focused every question about this or that on me personally, failing to look at the fact that the state of Ohio had records because we did start off our corporation well. But with the change in the industry with CBD, the industry finances changed very, very soon, right before we began to open our store. So there's a lot of different things that happened that even their accountant put in the documentation that they couldn't understand the square system. So I want to understand how is this ever used in any type of response if you're telling me you can't understand the system that we use that happens to be the system that is used almost globally now today. 
So there was nothing being hidden here, but State Farm started out in the beginning. It was a complete disaster. In the beginning, they started off with these complete scams, trying to swindle out of taking care of a claim that they could not place on me, no matter how you could slice the pie. Let me tell you why. Because the police showed up an hour late to the disturbance. Now, police were located 0.2 miles from our business. Understand me and hear me good. 0.2 miles. So you, you come out of the police station, you take a right, boom, you take a left. We were right there on the corner. We lit up the corner. We were right next to Tano's Pizza, located downtown, guys, right across from the mayor's office. It's a complete disaster. You guys have to hear me here. It's a complete scam. I don't know who's running this stuff here, but it was a complete scam from the beginning because how does the police officers decide that morning, oh, we're going to get here and take a right and go in the opposite direction and go to their old location, even though everybody in this town knows exactly where this business is. It's right here. The alarm's going off. What are you talking about? That's what they did. They purposely went in the opposite direction. They documented this on the police report. Police report. Clear as day. Anyone can see this. But even if they did go in the wrong direction, understand that the old address was just across the tracks. So if every officer, Billy Bob, came down here and hit a U-turn and came right across the tracks, it did not take an hour to respond to my business letting you know that there's a distress going on. What was going on, Mr. Billy Bob? It was a scam from the beginning. And I got the short end of the stick and I was the business owner. You tell me how we are equal in this America here when I get incriminated as a criminal and you don't have any type of any evidence whatsoever. It was a scam, scam, scam. From the beginning, dealing with this ridiculous company, State Farm Fire uh, and Casualty, out the gate, they started off with a scam. We can't, we've got to hire an accountant. Okay, accountant Billy Bob can't understand square, but yet you tell me we this accountant's de de determination is one of the reasons to stop playing games with me. I didn't just get born yesterday. They started out from the gate. They did not contact any person on our corporation I have a wife who's a partner. I have a partner who is our CFO. I've got another, a couple of share, I've got kids that are shareholders. They should have been calling other people on our corporation say, hey, you're under an investigation. Do you have any records of any money that you've transferred between? Yes, they do. Because I got records that I still haven't even turned in yet that from Mr. Spencer that he paid, uh, you know, uh, donated or paid into the corporation uh, out of his out of his personal pocket. So you guys are just this is getting a muddle. They're making this thing worse than it has to be. It's a scam. I don't understand why you just guys want to keep dancing back and forth about this, guys. You guys ruined our company and you know the writings on the wall. So we're not even getting to the meat of what you guys have done here that you just can't run from. So State Farm, I really implore you guys to take another reconsideration of our non-negotiable settlement agreement because we're not going to talk about anything less than that because you guys are constantly ignoring us like this doesn't matter. Now, not only did you publish pu publish defamatory, ridiculous comments about me, this is what you said to the public that I showed up wearing a blue suit with a loud tie with a bunch of jewelry on and was very braggadocious, failing to mention that I was only answering the questions that you gave me. So you were upset because of my answers, but they were questions that you calculated and came up with. And you published this on documentation. And then you trying to say to me that you're not violating rights. That right there, my friend, it's a complete violation of my rights because my personal appearance had nothing to do with our corporation's insurance policy. I am a represent, re representative director of operations of the HCB Distribution Corporation, and our corporation is what carried the policy. I don't know what type of a scam you guys were running on me, and then you're publishing this crap. That's probably why you let go of your first attorney. I don't know. Whatever it is, you didn't. You're stupid enough to not cover your tracks, and I've got all the evidence of this stuff. Okay, so this is what you've done. You published this stuff, and then when you don't have any evidence, you didn't try to say that I did something to how. 
How would I know that the police are going to show up an hour late, State Farm, when I live 20 minutes away from the store? Tell me that, please. Let's just stop with this scam. You guys started out the gate trying to put this stuff on me and my sister. The police wrongfully interrogated me and completely, I was scared out of my mind, guys. I've never been in trouble in my life. And in this interrogation room, this cop was in my face. And I'm like, what are you doing? I haven't even been in SWAT in over a week. And you think he's in my face and he's in the other ones. And I was so terrified. I told the mayor and he said he was going to get another police department involved to help investigate and never did that either. Where's the evidence, Mr. Mayor? You lied to me. The entire town is a scam. And they allowed all of this stuff to happen. And it doesn't get any better than that. Because not only did State Farm not call any of our officers, partners, shareholders, anything to notify or question, interview, anything else, document from anybody else. They've come up with this scam and it took them almost a year to make a decision. Oh, my goodness. They did not even call McNeil's. And their attorney said to me, it's because I did not provide them the information with McNeil's completely ignoring the fact that I sat through two nine, one six hour interrogation and one nine hour interrogation, one by Lonnie Johnson scam and one by Mike Manahan scam. When both times it was revealed well early on that I was the finance manager at McNeil. So I'm, I'm very, very, very uh, interested to understand Miss Lori, what do you mean? By it was my job to give you, you knew it. I gave you this stuff. Stop man peeing on me, telling me that's right. You, you guys knew exactly. You had every record out the gate. I gave you records that you couldn't even keep up with. We've got evidence of you guys saying you've lost the records. We're done with the dances. This is ridiculous. Why are you playing games with your client? And why are you trying to cover their tracks, Lori? I don't get it. At first, I had respect for you, but now we've got complaint after complaint in on you because you are ridiculous. We provided you with every piece of evidence to support everything that your client has done and completely violate our rights, and you just keep just ignoring this. Failing to mention that we're a, a protected class corporation, African-American corporation. Where do you guys get off? There are laws that protect corporations like mine. And it wasn't just a one-man show with a guy and his wife like you guys think. You guys have destroyed corporations and businesses and partnerships. You guys have ruined more than Marquis Skimble's life. And you've been dancing for two years. And I provided you with more and more evidence. Now you've got evidence where Deborah McSurley clearly says that State Farm told her on the phone that our claim was denied. Clearly, clearly says it on under oath that she says that somebody had said, I don't care if it was Lambert. So, Miss Lori, when you say I keep making false assertions about Mr. Lambert, well, maybe it is Lambert that I'm making it false. Somebody at State Farm disclosed to Deborah McSurley that our claim was denied so that she had the information to know this before anybody at the company knew. What are you guys talking about? It's right on paper. Are we going to sit here like we're two years old and don't see this? That's clearly a violation of the Ohio laws governing our protection. And you guys are just dancing with us. Why is this okay? How do you think this is all right? Because it doesn't even end there. You guys have continued to just disregard all of these actual truthful facts. We gave you alleged suspects that we thought it could have been, namely Mike Wells. You want to know your investigation with Mike? You asked his wife, where was he the morning of this event? You told me you couldn't ask my wife where I was when I was clearly in the bed with her that morning. Clearly, it took me 25 minutes to get to the store. But you guys literally focus an investigation on me. And Mike Wells was literally harassing our business almost every day that we were open. And we told it to the police. Coming by every day, laying on the horn. McNeil Chevrolet tells us to report them to you guys. They say it'd be just like Mike Wells to put up some guy that he knows to do this. Exact words from my former boss at McNeil's. I take their lead and give you that information 
and your only form of investigating Mike Wells is asking his wife where he was, and he was a known person that harassed us and mistreated us? He was our old landlord who mistreated us with our building. Do we got to go back and talk about that? You guys are a scam. State Farm, stop it. Lonnie Johnson, stop it. It started with you. You are the scam. Maybe Lambert's out of this now, but somebody violated our rights. I didn't type that up. Deborah said that. You don't understand that was under oath? What about the legal action under oath that we had in court mentioning Deborah McSurley illegally entering our building and touching and disposing our property? Filed in court. You want to tell me again why you didn't investigate or question Deborah McSurley on any reason as to why she might could have been the person responsible for these crimes? No, you never did. You didn't call the mayor who I had conversations with and I gave you guys the direct conversations. You didn't call my wife who I've been married to for 20 years. You want to sit here and tell me you didn't know she was my wife because that was your first excuse. That's what you're doing. You're peeing on me on my leg and telling me it's raining and I'm not, I wasn't born yesterday. Don't act like you didn't know I was a married man and been married for 20 years. It's on record with the state of Ohio. Don't dance with me. Yes, my wife goes by Arnold, but damn it, we've been married 20 years and I'm not going to play games with you. So you guys have the marriage license. So what else do you want to say, State Farm? You have mistreated our African-American corporation, and now it is time for you to be held accountable. You need to be held accountable for this. You cannot get away with this. You clearly, we've got clear evidence. What about the guy that stole my sister's truck, who we had a police report filed with Lucas County? Did you ever question him? Did you call him up? No. You didn't call anybody in the circle because guess what? The only people you investigated was me and my sister, and it was only to incriminate us as the responsible party. And somebody at State Farm told the police that this was insurance fraud, which is why they dropped our claim. All of this is a scam, State Farm. I wasn't the average criminal trying to figure out how to scam you all. See, what you don't understand is I had a 10-year tenure, a 10-year year tenure in this community. Seven years as the finance manager whom everybody knew that bought a new car in Swanton and some of Delta, okay? And just about every African-American that I pulled from Toledo, they came out to see me to buy cars. And again, I didn't just sell the cars, I was the guy. They didn't fire me, I quit. What makes a guy quit from a job that's making all his money? Oh yeah, because the true colors came out over the years and you get sick of it, you really do. I mean, you get, when your job is always threatened, you know, if I'd stop performing, you know good and well it's over. And you wanna wonder why I don't come out to all the parties and don't ask Marquise to come out because he won't show up, why? Why? Because I want somebody with some Trump written across his chest is going to say some ridiculous comment that I'm going to have to laugh off like I had to deal with all the years or seven years at McNeil's. I didn't want to have to deal with that because really I don't trust. I trusted a lot of y'all, which I don't today, but I trusted a lot of y'all then. But I don't trust the people y'all hung out with. There were people that came into that dealership and they showed me when they sat across the table from me that they did not like the fact that I was the guy that they had to sign papers with. So let's not dance with each other. There was not another African-American business owner in that city. And you guys sat back and smelled the coffee and allowed this to go on. And nobody stood up in my defense. You mean to tell me, Mr. Mayor, you and I, we cut the paper. You're watching me sing karaoke. You're my guy. Uh, you stopped by the store a few times. Where in the hell were you? Where's your defense at? Where was your... No, there's no way. Wait a second here, guys. We can't put this on Mr. Kimball. There's no way. How would he know that you guys were somewhere stuffing donuts down your throat? Who knows? He knew full-fledged what happened. 
So if the mayor know you can't slide out of this guy, you're supposed to be the leader. You did, you allowed this to happen and you ran the only African-American owned business out of your city. You are a ridiculous scam. I hope you lose the reelection. That's ridiculous. Show me another own business out there then. You completely blew it, guy. You did nothing about it. And you know how your officers mistreated me. And then we slide into McNeil's calling me acting like the police department, impersonating the cops. They call me in February. So that's why they're being mentioned now. You see, there's a thing called statute of limitations, in case you didn't know, that they reactivated by doing this to me. I wasn't coming after McNeil's. If I wanted to get them for racial discrimination, I would have done it when I worked there. But they want to sit here and poke the bear, and I'm supposed to believe they had nothing to do with this. And why didn't State Farm question any of them? What do you mean? They're six minutes from the business. Are you kidding me? I was not born yesterday. This whole thing is a scam. Read my lips. It's a scam. It's, it's a scam. Lori Thompson's a disaster. Yes, she's a disaster. Complete disaster. Jeff Lambert's a disaster. Complete disaster. All of them, just like Lonnie Tom Johnson, a complete disaster. You guys mistreat African Americans, and it's clear. It's very clear what you guys do. So don't give me all the blacks and the blacks. You don't care because this has been going on. And then you had the audacity to reopen our claim in February and not even notify us and tell us. I had to slide up on that myself. I had to log in as an, and see the dates. Like, are you kidding me? So nobody was going to tell us that you made a decision to open up the claim and we're still hearing the old patty cake and, uh, 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 responses from Lori. Oh, yeah, just email and, oh, we need your tag. We provided all of this. You want to dance, Lori? We've got way more evidence if you want to keep going smoking up this bear. I just came across some more evidence that I'm going to send you tonight. I don't care. I work through the night. I work Sundays. I don't care what you guys think. And so do my representatives. So they're under my direction. We're going to get some kind of reaction, and we need to understand why you guys are reminded. This is put on your back burner like it's not important to you. It's not ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You guys have destroyed lives. You're completely destroyed the community. And African American, forget the United States community right now. You destroyed an African American built community that was supposed to be in place for African American minorities, businesses, owners that we had set up with jobs, kids set up with their future. You guys robbed all of that from us. And you think we're just going to sit back and dance with you. You guys have completely mistreated us. It's the writings. It's writing is on the wall. This is not something we're making up. I'm not here to dance and play with you and say, oh, I've never been that guy. But when there's clear evidence that you completely disregard every one of these violations that are completely, they were not even smart enough to cover up the tracks. We've got evidence of the pictures of our property being removed while still under policy with you guys. We've got evidence of what was still left in the store after the first incident while still under policy with you guys, under investigation. Why weren't you investigating why we were robbed? And it was clearly McSurley because you have the legal documents that were filed in court. Why weren't you investigating? Why am I telling you these things? You did not conduct a thorough investigation and you made up an excuse and falsely uh, implicated that I'm a criminal. And you just don't get to do that with a guy that does not practice his life trying to figure out how to scam people. You don't do that to me. I busted my ass to set that business up and my wife busted her pretty ass setting that thing up and making it beautiful both times. And you bastards think that this is okay because it's, just, it's not just me. I'm done fighting for just me. Now I'm fighting for my damn wife. You know why? Because I'm responsible for her. And she now has had to be experienced, have to not have the same life she's accustomed to because you guys have played the toodle-toodle with us like we're stupid, like I'm homie the clown or something. My name is Mr. Marquise L. Kimball, and I've spent my entire life trying to make sure that I follow the laws and do what's right and stay out of trouble. 
You don't get to put false implications on me and publish that information as my insurance company. If I got to be the only person screaming for my rights every day, you completely violated my rights, not to mention the rights of our entire corporation because you didn't call not one additional officer, partner, shareholder, none of it. It's all required. Do I have to read you the sections of the law that you violated here? Stop playing these games. Just stop it. Not to mention all of the other things that you guys completely done and just releasing our personal information over the phone to Deborah McSurley. If that ain't enough right there, why in the world weren't you guys going after her when it came to us being robbed a second time? So you think you're not going to pay a check for anything? You think we're just going to sit back and know this is we're done with that. Lives have changed because of you guys. 20 year marriage has problems now because of you guys. My children have been affected. My grandkids have been affected, not to mention my partners, not to mention the credit lines that you guys have severed and destroyed. We can never bounce back. The industry has totally changed now. In case you forgot, it's now a DHC industry. There's different requirements to jump out there. And that's what we have included in our only demand to you guys that we're willing to talk about. You don't got to want to even meet that. That's fine. I really don't. If I were you, I would heavily advise your client not to get into a racial discrimination battle with us because we have the clear cut evidence of each and every violation that you guys have committed, disregarded, and ignored this entire time. And we're done. We are absolutely done. It'd be one thing if you just looked at it in June. But we're talking about something that you made the decision to reopen in February, and you still have not figured out how to close this properly. You've got some crackerjack attorney throwing around some ridiculous statements asking for documents that we've already sent several times. You're making up every excuse. It's making me think that you're purposely waiting for the statute of limitations. I'm not stupid. I don't know what type of a scam is running here, but we're going to figure it out tomorrow. If I got to be on the phone until I reach the Honorable Governor Mike DeWine's office himself, we are going to speak to somebody because this is a disaster. You all are scams all through it all. We've got an action against McNeil's. We've talked about the Swanton police. We've talked about the mayor. We've talked about every person. And you guys have slid through and allowed this to happen. Are you kidding me, State Farm? Lori, stop covering up for them. Because if that's the case, it looks like you're aiding to this. We've had to put in several complaints against your office. It's, it's, it's complete ridiculous. I mean, are you serious? Somebody's going to say, what is going on? Because you have ignored us an entire week. What do you have to say about McSurley clearly stating that State Farm told her that our claim was denied? What do you have to say about that? That doesn't even need a jury or a judge to figure it out. And you really want to tell me about stuff being dismissed? This claim was dismissed because we didn't trust our, our legal representation. They were doing all kinds of stuff. We don't even understand why it was dismissed or why we never even got our day in court. So you really don't want to go down that lane with us because we feel like it was all a complete racist dis discrimination scam all the way out there. I was the only African American still to this day in the entire situation. You want to sit here and act like we didn't get mistreated? I never got a day in court. You tell me that, State Farm. So no, we're not going to do this crap. We were mistreated. And now we're releasing to the public the true factual statements and facts and truthful statements that have occurred and been disregarded continually for now over 150 more days. This claim was filed in January of 2022. We're 2024. What are you doing, State Farm? Because clearly the law says that this is an action that you usually, insurance companies do to try to skate by the statute of limitations. No, you're not going to do that to us. You've already robbed us of our entire business.
And not only that, you've destroyed my professional name and career and image beyond repair. Not only that, you've destroyed my partner's financial statements, financial uh, lives, our, uh, our personal lives, our emotional lives. I mean, there's emotional distress. There's all kinds of stuff that you guys have allowed because of all of these false accusations. And you guys have never did your job in the first place by investigating the people you should have. Let's stop playing the dance fairy here. I implore you, I beg of you, on behalf of the HCV Distribution Corporation, after talking with my confidants and the people that I know, I implore of you to, to convince your client, State Farm, that we're at the end of the road and the best thing for them to do is to honor our out-of-court offer and settle this case. Immediately. Not, not, not tomorrow. Not, 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 immediately. Immediately. Why? Because we have to take care of some immediate things that have occurred because of your client's negligence. Then we stop all action. We literally will go and undo. We will contact every department and say, hey, yes, we're not going to say that what happened didn't happen, but we are going to tell you that the complaint has been satisfied. And, oh, there's a lot to be undone. We have made complaints at every single national office that you can possibly imagine. I'm not afraid to talk to anybody. I'm not trying to scam anybody here. I have the high, highest regard and respect for this good air state that we're in because I am myself a public officer and notary for 10 plus years. I'm not here just to scam people. I'm a minister too, by the way. Let's not forget these statements and these records are on file with the state of Ohio. All of that is on file and on record. But yet you falsely accused me of a crime and you let all of these people around me that could have been responsible and committed these crimes slide. While falsely and wrongfully denying our claim and allowing our business to blow up in front of us. We've lost our business. We've lost our property. We've lost jobs. We've lost, I mean, several people lost jobs. There's employment that was lost here. You guys have the records. You have the records. That didn't even include, I gave you the 1099. So we've had other people that was dealing with our company. It was not just people that work there every day. Are you kidding me? You've seen all of the 1099s. You've seen it. You've seen the records. Those are all African-American businesses. You've ruined all of those people, State Farm. So we implore you, Lori, close the deal. We implore of you. We beg of you. Don't take this any further than it has to go because we talked to several civil rights uh, 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 discrimination attorneys that we're thinking of retaining here that we know within the African-American community that are highly respected and they love me and I love them all. I love these guys. And they've given me the information that we have enough information that this could get really, 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 really bad. We've already contacted newspapers located in the same city as State Farm's corporate office. So listen, we don't want to even do this any further. We implore, we implore peace. We implore peace and we expect and we would hope because of your negligence and violations of these complaints, we would hope that you would do the honorable thing and just honor our settlement and let's get our lives back together. You, by you honoring that settlement and saying, let's make it right with Mr. Kimball and his associates, you immediately put people back to work. You immediately bring back marriages and bring back families and bring back things that have been broken for two plus years. You immediately put immediate, uh, my children back into the place and grandkids with the, the uh, educational things that I had for them and their goals in my state. You do this for all of our partners and all of the people connected to us. The minute you say, you know what? We dropped the ball. Mr. Kimball's not a criminal. We should have been calling McSurley. We should have called the mayor. We should have at least got some character witnesses from his old job he worked at for seven years. None of that was done. Yet, I'm not the insured person. It's a corporation that's registered. Why did you guys just, out the gate, you just did all kinds of things out the gate. And we are have 1,000% suspicion that this is purely 1,000% only because we are an African-American corporation. And this is discrimination at its pure finest. We are tired of it. I mean, this is not what our ancestors fought for. 
I done the right thing. I, I did the right thing. I kept it right. I did what I was supposed to do and became a business owner in the same community. And you guys get to incriminate me as a criminal? Where do they do that at? I don't understand it, State Farm. So listen, we can make this thing right. I've already talked to my partners and, you know, we could make this thing right. You guys know what it is. We could close this thing immediately. You need to have a conversation with your client immediately. Let's get this over with uh, fast, truthfully, because it's going to bubble and bubble and bubble. And it's, it's going to get worse and worse and worse because we're going to make noise until this gets public knowledge everywhere. I'm talking about every single piece of evidence that we, pre we presented to your office that you just keep ignoring. Like the clear evidence of McSurley telling, uh, disclosing under oath that your client disclosed to her information that she should not have known about our policy. Clear cut evidence to this. But you tell me that we're uh, asserting things that didn't happen. You're telling me we're asserting that racial discrimination did not happen with Mike Manahan, State Farm's previous attorney, published those awful, ridiculous things about my appearance. What do you mean I was braggadocious? What do you mean, blue suit, loud tie? What do you mean? All of that's a scam. Don't dance with me. You didn't do it, Lori, but Mike did it. And they didn't erase the records. Then when there was nothing found on me, then now we can come with this. We think he had something to do with it. What? Where do you get that at? How would I force I know that that thought your scamified caps were going to show? Oh, my gosh. Listen, we implore of you. Close the case with us. We really don't want to take it any further. But according to the potential legal team that we are thinking of retaining, uh, this could get really, really, <clears throat> really bad um, for you guys and everybody involved here because we're constantly put on the back burner like this doesn't matter. And it's not right. This is racial discrimination at its finest. And I implore Lori Thompson and her associates to convince their client to do the right thing. Until next time, be blessed on purpose.